there. How's it going? It's Sunday, April 26, 2020, and the stock market is not open today because it's a Sunday. But I figured this is a great time to mess around with some new formulas here in the Google Sheets um, stock tracker, stock ticker tracker, and using some of Google Finance's formulas to look up historical data and to grab stuff from the beginning of the week to see what the changes in the certain stocks were for the entire week and not just from the previous day. Like what you're seeing here is you're seeing how the stock did on Friday. Um, this is how it did the whole week of 420 through 425 or 424. So what's very cool about this is it was kind of difficult to do because historical data as you pull it out of Google Finance kind of comes in a, in a different format than just one row, but I did get it in here and found some interesting things as I was going through it, kind of want to talk about the week in review of stocks. So when you sort this like this, descending, you can see that Whiting Petroleum crushed it this week up 229%. Oil, gas, oil, gas. Look at all these oil, gas, oil, gas, oil, gas. Now, one thing you'll notice about this as we grab the top 10 from the week and put them over here, is you'll see that the heavy, yeah, heavy energy sector and undervalued kind of bouncing back from this huge sell-off that was happening when all the oil was tied up and uh, these futures contracts were going nuts at the end of or during throughout the week. So things went nuts this week. This is a, just a dangerous, dangerous industry. Look at all those micro caps. So there are a lot of micro caps. Uh, so small oil companies and I don't think there was anything really in here except looks like Inovio, Inovio Pharmaceuticals is a mid cap. They're, they're really performing when it comes to any other industry other than energy, oil, and gas. I need to do a review on Inovio to let you know what's going on there. But that, that tells me after looking at this that they need some further research because they really were the, the best gainer for the week. How much did they go up? They went up, Anuvio went up 79% this week from 814 to 14.59. So they went up 21% just on Friday, but 79% for the week. How cool is that to see that like that? Very fun, very fun stuff. So there were 16 stock, or 18 to almost 20 stocks that went up 50% this week. A lot of energy, oil, and gas. So it's just showing a lot of fluctuation of what's going on with the oil industry. But let's flip this upside down and say, well, who are the biggest losers of the week? And it looks like that's, I would have expected to see a higher percentage here. The reason why this is, there's not every single company is in here. I have deleted a lot of companies out of this list as I go through it. I've only gone through about 250 companies so far out of a possible almost 3,000 that started in this list. So I'm only about 10% done, really, not even. And as I get through it, I'll have more details and notes, but understand like there were some things in Brazil that had terrible weeks um, because of what's going on there. They're not in here. These are, you know, this is going to trim down this list. So understand this is not a complete list and I may be adding companies in the future as uh, I learn more about doing this every day and every week. So what you see here is these are the, the 10 biggest losers and it really only went down 20% for the week. That's surprising. Overall, I feel like that's, I would have expected to see a lot worse. Maybe the, there are companies that I didn't have in here. But of these top 10 losers, Hertz, up to Hertz is number two for the week. Wow. Hertz down 23% on the week because of no rentals. Um, their market cap is down to half a billion. Um, you can see that chart there is ugly for Hertz. American Eagle, I saw that coming and I see I see it going down even further. The fact that American Eagle's got a $1.3 billion cap, they better do something online to survive this. This is looking awful uh, because people aren't going to malls right now. Getting that. Oh, that's USA Today and stuff, newspapers, they're hurting. Wow. Wow, Gannett is only worth $95 million. I actually worked for Gannett back in like 2001 for a couple days 
they used, they used to measure the ads in the, in the physical newspaper in Burlington, Vermont. I, I worked at a Gannett for just a short period of time. It was an awful, awful job. Um, <laughs> terrible job. I'm not surprised that they are down into microcap. They used to be much more powerful than that. Well, actually, if I look back, what, uh, 3,000 days, will this even work? I wonder what Gannett used to be worth a long time ago. I don't know if this is going to work because... I don't know if it, it'll allow you to go back that many days. We're going to find out. So that's like eight years, probably eight or nine years. I need, I need to go back 20, 20 years almost from when I worked there. And that, might, that might not work. I don't know. It still says loading. It might, it might work. It's a really powerful application. Yeah, look at that. Wow. And what did I say? You know, it used to be something. Yep. I mean, that's probably only in the dollar range, but they definitely had a market cap that was over a billion dollars at one point. I guarantee that. That's awesome. Look at that, like, eight-year chart right there. How cool. Kudos to Google. One of the reasons why I say invest in Google is because they offer products like this. Fantastic. So uh, look at these losers, losers, losers. Uh, what industries? I don't even have all the industries yet. Consumer discretionary specialty retail. Yep. The Rona is taking everybody down because people aren't going out and it's not changing anytime soon. There's almost no way it can change anytime soon unless we have an all-out cure, treatment cure. Crazy. All right, so biggest winners, biggest losers for the week. Let's talk about the stocks that I've actually been looking at. And I have some stuff hidden here. Let's sort this, now that we have this weekly information, let's sort this by the two things that we care about which is percent of watch price ascending or percent of ceiling price ascending. So what we're going to see here are companies that I've been paying attention to that I've actually put ranges of prices on because I know enough about, or you know, I feel like I've got enough to, to dig in and, and put a price on here that I want to commit to or that I feel like it's going to roam around that price. And the one that, this is a new one with Enzo Biochem, just because I, I like their testing platform for testing and what they have announced. So that's a new one. They were up 6% this week overall. Here's one, the Light, L-O-I-T-S, LSI Industries. They make the some of the screens for like the gas stations and pharmacies where you touch screen, stuff like that. They're going to be in demand. They're up 11% this week. Abbott Laboratory is down 1%. They're a testing company, but they're big. They're, they're going to continue. I think they will get to $100 a share. Microsoft down 1%. Didn't do much this week. Amazon up 1%. You know, this is not a lot of movement there. Uh, Wendy's up 6% this week. Yep. I actually wanted to migrate my ceiling out a little bit. Wendy's, because all the drive through, they're open late. They've got good locations. That one. You can start if you're if you're thinking about options. I'm learning a little bit about options because I I you know you got to learn about options I guess in the stock market. You know calls on Wendy's up in the eighteen nineteen twenty dollar range are very or sorry there's already at eighteen ninety one call a, a Wendy's call at twenty dollars is a good good play right now. Um, they're they're going up. They're they're even if they take a hit with the economic downturn they are going to continue to have business if as long as they have. Don't have supply issues with their food is the only thing I could potentially think if we have really food problems, whatever. Google up 1%. Like I said, good company. Um, Walmart down 2%. That means buy Walmart because they're going to continue to go up. No doubt. They're at 80. Yeah, let's look at this by percentage of ceiling price. Unless we want to talk about eBay, which is up 5% this week, but still out of my range. Tesla's down 1%. I'm moving my ceiling price on Tesla up to $12.50. I know. What are you doing, Ken? This is a great company. It's a great company. I'll show you why. EBS, Emergent Bio Solutions. What did I do with them? I need a price on them. Why? I made notes because antibody treatments. Financials look pretty good. The stock's on the upswing. Except they're a little expensive, but I liked what's going on with them. So that's why I looked them up. Netflix where is, is overpriced for us, and they're down 2% this week. So let's look at this again by percent of ceiling price ascending, and then put this in order. Tesla, Walmart. This is really the order you should be purchasing stocks based on this file. These 10 look like this. 
So I'm just going to go through this and I'll be done with the week, but um, just super cool to now look at this by a certain time frame. I'll probably do one of these every week uh, because it was pretty cool to, to look at it, um, not just in one day, but we could do a week, you could do a month, you could do anything by, by changing the formula and, and doing a video about it. So, okay, this is just a daily change, not the weekly change. So I have a lot of large caps. I only have a couple micros, which this one's kind of a testy bet. But I think they have a potential big upswing if, if done right. But that one's a little riskier. Um, Google's number five. So, so buy Tesla because they're going to be a $1,000 stock or more by the end of the year probably. Walmart because they're steadily going to do this on this line. So they will be $150 a share by the end of the year. Abbott Laboratories because everyone's going to be getting testing. I mean, look at those lines on these stocks I like. There's a reason why. It's the reason why they've been stable. Enzo Biochem, yeah, this is risky. Uh, Alphabet, Google, because Google's going to be part of this solution and they're part of our lives and I'm using Google right now. Microsoft, because if I'm not in Google, I'm in Microsoft and Excel doing something else for another person. <laughs> and, but, and, you know, they're in our lives. More screens everywhere until they exhaust all the screens and you see screens in every single place. And there's international trade and, and their American-based business here doesn't need to be American anymore because we have more imports coming in, which I don't think is coming anytime soon because of the virus. Then you can consider, consider dropping them, but they're good right now. Amazon's going to be with us forever, but they're expensive. Wendy's has gotten expensive, but look at this. See where they were? They, they're still underpriced. I got to change that. You can tell from the chart that... They're, they're making back some of the losses they had, and people are realizing they're strong. Their ceiling price is actually 20. I said make a call when he's at 20. That's why, because the ceiling price is really 20 for them. 20 puts them right about at the level where they were, I feel like, right? I think so. I think 20 gets them just about a little. That, that line is about 21 or 22, even. So. They're going to be getting back to 20 here. The, the problems in the economy are good for Wendy's because you're not given as many choices for quick food and drive through and they're everywhere. eBay. Yeah, eBay, really people realize that eBay does well in the online economy as people want to sell stuff that they, that they have around the house. It's not going to be Craigslist. You're not going to have anybody come in your house. You can just sell it on Amazon or eBay. Uh, I showed my kid eBay the other day, so they have also upswing potential, but they're, you can see they're expensive right now. Is there anything else we want to talk about? I don't know. I'm excited. Uh, this is fun doing this, this change, you know? Like, let's look at... Actually, there's something I want to show you about the biggest losers real quick. There's so the sector of the these losing stocks. I think that what, what you can do if you're doing the option games or you're really trying to pick things one way or the other is a lot of these industries industry-wide are going to get destroyed. And a couple of the names that I saw over and over again as I was going through this were financials, thrifts, and something. Let me show you what, what they are. I don't have them all labeled yet. I got to get through the other you know, 2,600 or whatever. Thrifts, yeah. Financials, thrifts, and mortgages. And basically, this one, because everyone's having difficulty paying rent and, and so much unemployment and losing the jobs, there's going to be a lot of fluctuation in these thrifts and mortgage finance companies. I'm going to have all, the, all of them in here eventually, probably by the end of the next week or two. And I saw, look at that, like down 5%. Big bad days here. They're going to start to realize their defaults, and they're going to start to announce earnings, and they're not going to know where to put their money. I see this industry having difficulty. Insurance, as well, depending on, especially if someone gets caught paying for reimbursement for the closures of related to the virus. If some insurance companies start have to pay those out with certain liability or business insurance policies, nobody ever accounted for that. That could bankrupt a lot of insurance companies. It could be a complete mess. So there's a whole lot of action happening. That's the week in review from 420 to 424. We will be on target for another video tomorrow. 
to talk about that day. And um, yeah, I mean, this, there, there's no sports going on. It's pretty much nothing but stock market. So may all your trades be winning.